Three weeks ago, I sent a letter to families across my home state of Washington asking for their help as we reform our broken health care system. I told them that I wanted to pass a plan that protects existing coverage when it's good, improves it when it's not, and guarantees care for the millions who have none. I asked them to share their stories with me and ideas about how to make this vision a reality. I told them that I know health care is a very personal issue, but also that personal stories have the power to change minds and transform debates. Mr. President, the response to my request has been simply overwhelming. I want to share some of the stories that have been pouring into my office, over 5,000 so far, because they underscore not only the desperate need to fix our broken health care system, but also the dire necessity to get it done this year. For too many families today, health care reform can't wait. Mr. President, I want to share a story from a letter I received from Rita from Seattle, who sent me a story about her sister Janet. Janet was unemployed and had lost her health insurance when her throat began to hurt one day back in 2004. She paid out of her own pocket to visit a health clinic and was sent home with antibiotics. Well, weeks later, she was still in a lot of pain and finally managed to get an appointment with a specialist, but she was told she had to wait six weeks more to come in to get help. Only after begging them for an appointment was she seen by the specialist three days later and was told that the pain she had been living with was in the late stages of an aggressive form of throat cancer. Well, Janet died not long after that. It was a death that would have been prevented had she been able to see a specialist earlier. Janet's not alone. A woman by the name of Kathleen from Puyallup, Washington, sent in a story about her friend Kelly. Kelly had just been laid off from work when she came down with what she thought was the flu. She didn't have any health insurance because she'd been laid off from her job, and she couldn't afford to go to the doctor, so she waited. Two weeks later, she felt even worse, so she finally made an appointment to go in for a checkup. Well, Mr. President, Kelly never made it to the doctor. Her seven-year-old son found her dead on the couch on the morning she was supposed to go in. She died from an untreated ovarian cyst. Because Kelly didn't have health insurance, that little boy no longer has a mother. Mr. President, I think the fact that these stories are possible in the greatest and richest country in the world is simply shameful. No son should lose a mother simply because she can't afford care. No family should have to watch a loved one suffer because insurance companies, instead of doctors, are making the decisions. That's why we so badly need to reform our health care system this year. Now, our country has been working on this issue for over 60 years, and we have spent months and months this session alone working to put together a reform package that works for all Americans. We've had over six months of hearings. We went through over 50 hours of public markups. We debated over 200 amendments. So when I hear some of my colleagues from across the aisle saying we should slow down, saying that we should take more time, or that we're trying to reform health care too fast. And when I see some of them shrugging off every attempt we've made at engaging them and bringing them into the process, I think of Kelly and I think of Janet. And I think of all the families out there right now with sick husbands or sick wives or sick kids. I think of all the small business owners I've talked to who can't cover their employees. I think of the people who have coverage but are worried about losing it today in this uncertain economy. I think about all the working Americans who are paying a hidden tax today in the form of rising premiums in order to cover those Americans who don't have access to care. Mr. President, as a mother and as a United States Senator, I say enough is enough. Now just yesterday we heard some pretty ugly and blatant rhetoric one member of the Senate who wants to protect the status quo, doesn't want to make any changes, said, and I quote, if we're able to stop Obama on this, it will be his Waterloo. It will break him, unquote. Well, Mr. President, that's playing games with real lives in order to score 
cheap political points. Blocking health care reform isn't going to break the President of the United States. It will break American families. It will break American businesses. It's going to break the bank. Mr. Pre President, Americans deserve better. The families of Janet and Kelly and the thousands other who have written me deserve better. We can't play politics with the most important thing to our nation's families, the health of their loved ones. Mr. President, they say that justice delayed is justice denied. Well, health care delayed is often health care denied. It was denied to Kelly. It was denied to Janet. And it gets denied to more Americans every single day that we wait. So I call on all of our colleagues here in the Senate to work with us to rise above partisanship. We have a good plan right now. We're working to listen and bring everybody in and make it better. It will rein in the costs with the goal of lowering them across the long term. It will make sure that all Americans have high quality affordable coverage. Mr. President, this issue is not going to do, go away if we don't do anything. It's not going to get better or easier if we wait. In fact, today costs are rising at an unsustainable rate for those who do have insurance. And more and more Americans are losing their insurance every day. We've been talking about reforming the health care system for a very long time. You know, I go home to my home state of Washington every weekend. And I am asked often now if it's the right time to tackle health care reform. In these difficult and challenging economic times when people are worried about paying their bills, worried about losing their jobs, worrying about what's coming around the cor corner, they ask me if we're biting off more than we can chew. Well, I tell them this is exactly the time we need to act. Premiums are rising three times faster than wages today. Every day, 14,000 more Americans lose their health insurance. In these already difficult times, I don't want to add losing health insurance to the list of concerns that our families have to deal with every day. We know that the current system is unsustainable. Even those people with really good coverage today are, fast, are faced with massive costs and rising premiums. That's why tackling this problem now has to be part of our long-term economic recovery program. Mr. President, without health care reform, family budgets are going to continue to be strapped. More Americans are going to lose their care. We're going to hear more stories like Janet and Kelly. I hope that we can put aside the partisan rhetoric. I hope we can put aside the talk of slow this down. It's too fast. Mr. President, this issue is imperative, and I urge my colleagues to act.